municipalities and states across the country, including my home state of New York, have begun to issue temporary bans on evictions in order to respond to the current crisis gripping the country. In this video, I want to talk about whether or not these bans are fair to all the individuals involved and consider what, if anything else, should be done in order to level the playing field both for landlords and tenants. Coming up. Hey guys, if we're just meeting, my name is Vitaly Volpov. I'm a practicing attorney, an active real estate investor, and a part owner of a real estate brokerage in upstate New York. On this channel, I discuss relevant legal concepts as well as best strategies and tips for real estate investing. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that YouTube notifies you of all my future content. If you enjoy the content in this video, hit the like button and comment down below. As always, whenever I'm talking about legal concepts, as well as social, socioeconomic concepts, just know that I'm expressing my own opinion, that I'm not providing any legal or financial advice. You should always consult with your own attorney and your own advisor before making any legal or financial decisions. And also know that the views and opinions that I express in this video are my own alone and don't necessarily reflect those of my law firm or any of my business partners. As I'm sure all of you know by now, unless you've been living under a rock, the country is in a crisis, the world is in a crisis, Unfortunately, because of the YouTube algorithm with certain rules with YouTube, I can't actually name the crisis or really discuss what the crisis is really about, other than to say that it's a health crisis and there's an illness that is impacting people. So in order for this video not to get shadow banned by YouTube, I'm not going to name what the crisis is and what exactly the illness is, but I'm assuming that all of you know exactly what's happening right now. So with that in mind, let's talk about the different bans that we're starting to see on evictions across the country. I'll talk about New York State, but this also applies across the entire country. You see them, you see the bans like this in Seattle, San Jose, other states across the country. This is something that's happening all around. I'm pretty sure that by the time that this is over, we're gonna see a complete moratorium on evictions pretty much everywhere across the country. So let's talk quickly about New York. New York State Unified Court System has just issued a guidance or issued a notification to all of its personnel, basically saying that beginning on March 16th at 5 p.m., they will no longer be accepting or allowing any evictions in any of its courts throughout the state. So what does this actually mean for landlords and what does this mean for tenants? Well, first thing is, it does not mean that tenants don't have to pay rent. As far as I can tell, the only thing that this is saying is that landlords cannot bring evictions against tenants for any reason, including non-payment of rent. But tenants are still under obligation, under contractual obligations to pay their rent. Practically though, if tenants are unwilling or unable to pay their rent, the landlords have no recourse and have no way to force the tenants to pay their rent. So what's going to happen is that at this point, if a landlord is dealing with a tenant who's not paying their rent, they can try to start the proceeding, they have to start the notice process that is required by State of New York, and at some point they'll get to a point where they're gonna to need to file a petition in court and they'll be unable to do that because courts will simply tell them, no, we're not processing those. So that's New York, but it's basically the same across the country with all the municipalities and all the states that have issued these types of moratoriums or rent holidays, whatever you wanna call it. It's gonna be the same thing. Landlords are unable to bring eviction proceedings and tenants are still supposed to, in theory, pay their rent. So what are some of the practical implications of these moratoriums or these bans? Well, first of all, the tenants who are not paying rent are not likely to ever pay the landlord that rent. Because of the situation right now, a lot of people are gonna be laid off, a lot of tenants are gonna be out of work with very limited finances. Most tenants, in fact, most Americans, don't have any kind of reserve funds. They don't have a six month emergency fund to support themselves if something like this should happen or anything at all should happen. And so they're basically not gonna have the funds to ever repay the gap however long it will be, whether it's one month, two months, or longer. And at the end of the day, it's just going to be a cost that's going to be borne by the landlords. It's gonna be a gap in their income streams for 2020. Now you could say that, well, tenants will get hired back 
once this crisis passes and they'll have some money, they'll be able to make extra payments and all that. And you know, that's well and good to say that, but in reality, that just simply doesn't happen. Being a landlord for many years, having seen how this goes down with most tenants, you, they just don't have the funds. They're not gonna be able to pay you extra. They're not gonna be able to make up a shortfall of $2,000, let's say, on top of the ongoing rent, assuming they stay in your property, ongoing rent that they'll have to pay you. It's just not gonna happen. So bottom line is, as a result of these moratoriums, the landlords are going to lose money and there's just nothing that, you know, nothing that you can do about that as a landlord. So this brings us to the question of fairness. Is this ban fair under the circumstances because of the crisis, because of what people are going through? Well, if you're looking at it from the tenant's perspective, and I think a lot of us can definitely sympathize and see what's happening to people, and because we're all in the same boat, we're, everyone's concerned, People are staying home, people are getting laid off, people are unable to work, people may be in bad physical health because of this situation. It's definitely something that is fair to tenants to give them a break, to not have them pay rent if that's the situation they're dealing with. So from the tenant standpoint, it's definitely a fair thing to relieve some of their financial burden. However, on the flip side, is it fair to landlords? And my answer on this right now at least is definitely no. It's not fair to landlords. A lot of landlords are also working and perhaps end up getting laid off and they're relying on income from the rental properties to supplement their income or maybe that's all of the income that they're getting. And now what the government is saying is that essentially tenants don't have to pay and the landlords have to bear the brunt of that lost revenue. The problem with that is that the landlords still have to pay their costs. I haven't heard anything from any of the governments in New York State, and I don't think I've seen it yet anywhere in the news about the rest of the country, where the landlords now suddenly don't have to pay taxes, for example, property taxes. All of the landlords, as far as I know, still have to pay property taxes. Landlords still have to pay landlord paid utilities. For example, water and sewer still needs to be paid to the municipality. Garbage collection, if that's something that the municipality collects, that still has to be paid. And obviously, last and not least, you have mortgages. Now, some people have suggested, and this may be a viable thing to try to do, it's for landlords to go to their lenders and say, I want a forbearance, give me a break, on my loans, on my rental properties because my tenants aren't paying me because of these moratoriums and because of the financial difficulties that they're going through. And that may be a viable way to relieve some of the burden on the landlords. But the problem is that's not mandated right now by states or federal government for lenders to give moratoriums or to give forbearances to landlords. And so until that happens, you have a problem because a lender doesn't have to actually provide that kind of a break to the landlord. Now, I know some people will say, and I've seen this in real estate Facebook groups, talking about how, well, this is an investment for landlords. They should have anticipated that something might go wrong and that sometimes investments lose money. And so it's not the same as a tenant who just loses their job and they're unable to pay and that investments sometimes go down, sometimes they go up. This is one of the times when it goes down and the landlords should have been accounting for and planning for this eventuality. The problem with this argument is that the people who are making it have no idea how rental properties work and they have no idea about the difference between rental properties and investments. Rental properties are not like stocks. You don't just buy a rental property and wait for it to appreciate in value and there you go, that's your profit, that's your investment. Rental properties are basically profit centers, they're businesses. And businesses have revenues and businesses have expenses. And in order to be able to run a profitable business, you need to make sure that your revenue exceeds your expenses. Otherwise, you're not gonna be in business. And that's just the truth, that's the fundamental misunderstanding that people have about rental properties. I know that some people, maybe in higher, more expensive locations, maybe they're investing for appreciation and they're willing to take a loss year to year on operating expenses and income on those properties, but that's not most landlords. Most landlords are buying rental properties because they want the monthly income and they think that they can make a profit after all expenses from the monthly income. So when we start talking about whether or not it's fair from the standpoint of landlords to give tenants a pass on paying rent, I would say it's completely unfair and it's definitely something that needs to be accounted for if the government is going to issue these types of mandates. So what should be done in order to make the situation more fair for both landlords and tenants? In my opinion, if you're going to issue a moratorium on evictions, you also need to issue a moratorium on other expenses that landlords have to pay. 
So that would be mortgages, that would be taxes, that would be utilities. All those things that the landlords are still required to pay in order to continue operating the business, in order to continue maintaining the property. I haven't even mentioned the fact that sometimes things break and the landlord may have to get a plumber or an electrician or fix the HVAC or any number of things that the landlord is responsible to the tenant for maintaining. Those have to be paid for. And who's gonna do it? Where is that money going to come from? If it's not coming from the rents, it has to come from the pocket of the landlord who may also be getting impacted by the crisis that we're facing. So it's certainly not fair for the government to simply make it a one-sided mandate saying that landlords, you can't evict tenants, and tenants, just know if you don't pay your rent, it's okay because they can't evict you, they can't do anything about it. It's definitely one-sided and it's definitely unfair. The problem with this whole situation, and this is the reality of it, is that even if the government was going to make it even-handed and balanced with respect to landlords not having to pay some of these costs, the problem is that someone is gonna have to pay those costs. Schools still need to run next year. They're gonna need revenue. They're gonna need school taxes to pay for that. Municipalities still need to provide services. They have to pay their garbage men to pick up garbage. They're gonna need to pay the utility companies. They're gonna need to pay the water department. All those things still need to be paid for, and if the landlords, if the property owners aren't paying for it, someone else has to. And what happens is, most of the time, is if the landlords get a break, then the municipality will look to the state for state aid in order to help with the disaster situation. The state, which is going to be strapped financially anyway because there are just so many disasters happening across the state and its revenue is going down as well, is going to then look up to the federal government for help and the federal government for aid. And the federal government is trying to and may be willing to provide aid and provide some money to relieve some of these issues. But the problem is that the federal government gets its money from taxpayers. And the only way for the federal government to really make up the shortfall is to get it from the rest of us. So it really just comes back full circle and the rest, the, the people who are earning money, who are being taxed in this country are going to have to pay for all the issues that we're dealing with right now. It's a reality. Unfortunately, there's no way to get around it. What we're facing today is an unprecedented crisis. It is a humanitarian and an economic crisis. And certainly it's something that I think everyone should be looking at with understanding. And what we need to do is we need to come together. We need to try to help each other. And we need to understand that costs are going to go up and revenues are going to go down for everybody. So when it comes to finances and economics of the situation, that's just the reality. On the flip side, you also have a lot of people who are suffering who may be getting affected by this disease and they need help from all of us and assistance and we need to make sure that we're doing our part. So from a business standpoint, from a real estate standpoint, yes, this is currently an unfair situation where the landlords are prohibited from evicting tenants, but if you're looking at it from a human standpoint, it's certainly something that we should all feel empathy for the people who are impacted by this, both on the health side and on the economic side and we should all try to chip in. There aren't any perfect solutions. I definitely don't have any crystal balls to see to know what's going to happen, whether or not this is going to end anytime soon or if it's going to get worse. A lot of predictions, a lot of people uh, in the news media are talking about how it's going to get worse before it gets better. So I think the best thing you can do is to try to anticipate, to try to prepare, to make sure that you have the money available, whether you're a tenant or you're a landlord. You should be a responsible person. You should have been saving up. You shouldn't be living paycheck to paycheck. You should be following all those things that people like me and other people on YouTube and elsewhere talk about for personal financial responsibility. And sometimes people who haven't followed that advice are now in a dire situation and it falls back on the rest of us, for better or for worse, to prop them up and to help them. So. With that said, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you're all staying safe. Please let me know in the comments below what you think about the situation, about the fairness or unfairness of it, whether it's from the tenant perspective or from the landlord perspective. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions for me, I'm, I'll be happy to answer them. Whether you have questions about the ban or anything else with regard to landlord-tenant law in New York. But for now, that's gonna do it. Like I said, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.